Hey guys, what's going on? It's Jay, and what I got for you today is the Canon 24 to 50 millimeter f4.5 to f6.3 ISSTM lens. Now, this is a super affordable kit style lens. It actually came with the R8, the Canon R8 that I recently got. So I got this lens with that camera, and that's what I tested this lens on. Now, this lens actually only goes for $300, which is unbelievably affordable when you consider like the optics, you know, 24 to 50 is pretty good. Also, most kit lenses start at 28 millimeter. So the fact that this starts at 24 is super nice because that extra wide angle view is welcomed and needed for vlogging purposes, especially if you're talking to the camera while walking and stuff like that. Notice how wide it is at 24 millimeter, even though it's cropped in a little bit due to the stabilization. All right, so now this is with the camera digital stabilization on maximum and the lens stabilization. So you're now looking, you know, it's not near as wide because it cropped in so much. So uh, not quite as good for that wide angle view, but hand holding, this is how the camera works. So if you're using this for a vlogging scenario, you don't want to use a gimbal, uh, just hand holding, this is what you can expect. And that's backlit by the sun. This is being lit by the sun. All right, so now here is with the digital stabilization turned off. So this is only the optical. So this is just the lens optical stabe, like I said, so there's no crop or anything. So this is the 24 millimeter wider view. Right, so in video mode here on the camera. And then if you look at the back of the camera here, all you gotta do is hit the Q menu right here, that Q button. And then down here on the bottom left is your movie digital stabilization. So these are the options that you can choose from. So this is off. This is on, and this is the enhanced mode. So these are the two that crop in that I was just showing you. So this has a less of a crop, more of a crop, and no crop. All right, so this is just another quick test at 24 millimeter. You can see I have it on the dashboard of my car, and this is the you know wide angle view you can get with no stabilization on in the camera, so there's no crop. So we're looking at just 24 millimeter here in the car. So pretty wide view. Also, if you get this as a kit with the Canon R8, it only costs $200. All right, so just going over this lens a little bit, it is a collapsible design. So you actually have to turn it to open the lens. So now we're at 24 millimeter. But what's cool about that is, you know, it takes up less room when you're stowing it in your bag. It's more compact and it's actually very lightweight. It only weighs in at 7.4 ounces or 210 grams. You know, it's mostly plastic when you feel around the body. You can see the front lens element there. Now it's a 58 millimeter filter thread, and uh, it also has a lens hood option that I'll have linked below in the video. It does not come with a lens hood. Now it also has this control ring here that you can use, and notice how it has a switch here for autofocus, control, and manual focus. So if you have it set to control, this ring here will do whatever function you have the camera programmed for. There's an option in the camera menu for this uh, for this particular feature. And then you also have a stabilization on and off switch here, which is nice. So if you're on a tripod, for example, you can shut that off. Looking at the back of the lens here, it's, you know, just pretty much all plastic and there's no weather sealing or anything like that on this lens, just so you're aware. I mean, it does make sense considering the cost. Now we have our lens contacts right here. That's what communicates with the camera. All right, so I'm just gonna mount this up to the Canon R8. Let's match up that line there to the lens mount. So by the way, guys, when you have a lens cap and a body cap together, you can just put them together like this and then they're as one and they won't be clanking around in your camera bag. So the lens does come with a nice pinch style lens cap. And again, you know, if you want to try to use this thing, what you got to do is you got to open it up first and that's 24 millimeter and then you can zoom all the way to 50 millimeter. So we're looking at f4.5 at 24 millimeter. When you get to about 28 millimeter, you're looking at f5. When you get to like 35 millimeter, it stops down to about f5.6. And then when you get to 50 millimeter in between 40 and 50, you're looking at f6.3. So one thing I wanted to mention is when it comes to getting a kit lens for a full frame Canon and you're on a budget, there's a few options out there. And another option that I was looking at is the 24 to 105. 
f4 to f7 lens that Canon also makes. So it's a little bit faster at the 24 millimeter mark at f4 compared to this lens, which is f4.5 at 24 millimeter. In addition, the 24 to 105, it's pretty much double the optical range. So that's a lot more zoom. If you're not sure which kit lens to get, the 24 to 105 would probably be a better option uh, if you're willing to deal with the extra weight because the 24 to 105 weighs about double. It's about double the size as well. In addition to that, the minimum focus distance on the 24 to 105 is about five inches at 105 millimeters. So you can get really close to subjects. So that's great for close-up photography, macro style photography. It's not like one-to-one -one macro, it's about 0.5x. So it's about half of what a real macro lens can do. And why I particularly like that is because I like taking pictures of flowers and stuff up close and I like the background nice and blurry. So that lens would be a better option for that. It's also $100 more, it costs $400 for the 24 to 105. So it's just food for thought and I just figured I would mention it while I'm talking about this lens. All right guys, I just wanna go over some lab photos first to give you a good baseline of sharpness and distortion because this lens has really bad distortion if shooting raw when you uncheck the lens correction option in Lightroom. So by default, the lens correction option was checked for me. So I just unchecked it to look and see and I was like, whoa, not good. So the distortion is crazy severe. As you can see, the huge vignetting in the corner here, it's actually just black. With that being said, the lens is really lightweight and really affordable. So Canon is choosing to use the camera to do a lot of the lens correction, which honestly does do a really good job. Sony's been doing the same thing for years and this allows the lenses to be a lot smaller and a lot lighter weight, but it does take processing power to then correct the image on the camera. And again, that's just what the manufacturers are doing these days. Back in the day when they did not have the software to do this stuff uh, or the processing power, you know what I mean? Because it was a film DSLR, the lens had to be optically correct as far as distortion and all that straight off the camera. Like the lens had to correct for that. So the lenses tended to be larger, heavier and so forth. So that is another reason why the good lenses are a lot heavier and a lot larger because the distortion is much more controlled than you're seeing here on this kit lens. And if you shoot in JPEG, it will correct this for you also. Just so you know, if you shoot in RAW, you do have to apply the lens correction in Lightroom here. Now we're looking at 24 millimeter here. If I zoom in, you can see the lens is actually really sharp. So it does a really good job. It's sharp here in the corner as well. You can see down here on the pipe cleaners, the sharpness is looking really good. So, like I said, that's pretty impressive if you ask me, especially considering the cost of this lens and how much correction is being applied. So anyways, when you stop it down to f5.6, it does sharpen up a little bit. You can see on the dollar bill, the contrast is a little bit better than wide open here. So here's f4.5 and here's f5.6. Now here's f8 and you can see here the sharpness is just that much better. It just crisped up you know, quite a bit. You could see a little more definition on the crayons and stuff like that. Now, 35 millimeter, if you zoom in, you can see sharpness is looking pretty good. Now this is at F5.6 is the max aperture at 35 millimeter. Now let me just show you the distortion here. And you can see the distortion is still pretty severe at 35 millimeter, but the lens correction does work quite well. So moving along, it does sharpen up a little bit when you stop down, but it's pretty sharp wide open, so I'm not too worried about that. Now here at 50 millimeter, this is wide open at f6.3, and you can see the sharpness is really good all the way in the corner. And let me show you what the distortion looks like at 50. So you can see there, it's still pretty significant, but not crazy. Now, just as a side note, I just wanna show you how much dynamic range the R8 has when shooting raw. Watch this, when I pull out the shadow detail, could bring almost all of that back, which is pretty remarkable. I just wanted to show you that real quick. So that's an advantage of shooting raw. You can still pull out some shadow detail in JPEG mode, but not near as much, which is why I always shoot raw, because you can pull the highlight detail back as well. Now, I just want to show you the minimum focus distance on this lens. So this is how close I could get to the quarter at 24 millimeter. And if you zoom in, you can see what we're looking at. So let me just go through the minimum focus distance really quick here. So that's 24 millimeter, that's 35 millimeter, that's 50 millimeter, 
And then at 50 millimeter, I went through the aperture. So this is f6.3, this is f7.1, f8, f11, and f16, f22, and all the way to f32. Now, if I zoom in on the corner at 100%, and I just backtrack out, you could see here is f22, here's f16, here's f11, f8, f7.1, and f6.3. So you can see the sharpness, it's just a little soft here at f6.3 at the minimum focus distance. But once you get to like f8, it really tacks up quite a bit right there. Looks really good at f11 as well. All right guys, let's go over some real world photos now and I'm gonna sprinkle in some video footage that I took as well. This is just a cool symmetry shot with the reflection with the water and all that and I thought I always love those. So this was actually taken at f22 in raw quality. Here's an example. I just wanted to show you the depth of field play you can get. So I focused near the minimum focus distance on this bolt and I got the river in the background and I thought this was a pretty cool shot, pretty cool composition and uh, you know just try to exploit what this lens can do at 50 millimeter f 6.3. Now here's just another one of another bolt and again sharpness, clarity, color, all looking pretty darn good uh, I would say. Now this was just looking down a hallway so you can see what 24 millimeter will look like in a hallway environment and because it's a pretty wide angle lens you get a pretty cool perspective here. Now let me show you what it looks like when I uncheck the lens correction here. That, so that's unchecked lens correction and that's with it checked. So just so you can see there. Now moving along here, I just took a minimum focus distance test here. I wanted to show you the telephoto compression that you can get when shooting at like a brick wall at an angle here. And you can see the perspective, how it, you know, compresses down. So this is at 50 millimeter and this is at 24 millimeter from the same spot. So you can see here just the different perspectives you can get at the different focal ranges. I always find that interesting, I don't know. So looking up at a cell tower here, this is what it looks like looking up. All right, so here's just an old phone booth. This was at 24 millimeter. And here's the same shot from the same spot at 50 millimeter. So you can see that focal range there, 24 versus 50. Then I actually walked closer and took another shot, just a detail shot here at 50 millimeter. Here's just a shot of a uh, dandelion. And here's one that I took in JPEG up close. And I actually cropped in on this one because I wanted to show you just the sharpness and uh, background blur you can get. So I did crop in on this image. The original looked more like this. Now here's a shot of one of these cool historic signs. I love these signs because they have bright, brilliant colors and they also have a nice texture to them uh, as you'll see in a second. So here's just a snapshot at an angle and here's one that I took at F8 and I pretty much tried to frame it as square as possible. I got really close and if you zoom in, you can see just the incredible sharpness clarity and you can see that texture that's on this sign as well and very very good now this is just an example at the the lens you know in jpeg mode at f8 so it's like the sweet spot of this particular lens when shooting 50 millimeter so really good result when in this scenario now shooting through a fence here this is what you can expect you can get some pretty decent background blur as you could see the car going past. I was just walking along and on the sidewalk it had like this metal grate, orange and Rockland utility is what that stands for. Now here I focused on the leaf just to show you some depth of field play. And now if you zoom in on the leaf, you could see all the texture, you know, the veins and stuff like that. And again, just look at the blurry taillights there, which I thought were pretty cool. I just converted one to black and white just for, you know, fun. Here I was just walking to lunch and I just took a snapshot so the grass was freshly cut and I thought the lines looked pretty cool and the clouds were really brilliant. Now here's one of my uh, boy Jace on this uh, cool quad that I recently got. It's a Yamaha Kodiak. Here's a closer one at 50 millimeter. A little side angle of the Kodiak. Look at this beast. Now here's just one at 24 millimeter. This is a raw file. So this is a good, good one where I can show you the lens correction again and you can see just how bad it is in this shot. But once corrected, it's actually really good. So is it really that big of a deal? It's up to you. Now here's one zoomed in at 50 millimeter. Again, with no lens correction. It's really not too bad at 50 millimeter. This is a raw file. Now here's a vertical. And again, if you zoom in, you can see it's very sharp. Nice detail. This is at f6.3. Now, 
this was from this morning. I went down uh, during sunrise and uh, this eagle, this was actually, this is just a snapshot. This was a bald eagle. It just came out of the tree, like out of nowhere. And I was like, whoa, look at this cool eagle. So I just took a quick shot of it, you know, just uh, obviously I, I didn't have the right lens for that. All right, guys, so I took a bunch of HDR photos this morning. So what HDR means is I took multiple exposures for each shot. So basically I took a negative two exposure, a zero exposure and a plus two exposure and combine those images together. And what that does is it, it captures all the highlight detail from the negative two exposure and all the shadow detail from the plus two exposure. And then when you combine them together, you get this amazing composite with tons of highlight detail and tons of shadow detail. And this is great for high dynamic range scenes. As you can see here, this is a really high dynamic range scene. And this is what just a raw file looks like. So now when you look at an HDR file, this is what it looks like. And you could see it almost looks like magical. So it captured all the shadow detail and so forth. The depth of field is pretty cool here. You can see in the foreground with some of this, you know, out of focus area, it looks pretty sharp. This is just a raw file. I thought the reflection looked kind of cool underneath the uh, tree branch. And here's another one just shooting into the sun. And you can see it handled it quite well. You can see like these little helicopters getting ready to drop. Now here's just a shot of uh, some rocks on the ground and it's just a depth of field fall off type of shot. Here's a pretty cool shot of a dock looking out and it's just offered a nice perspective. And that again, that 24 millimeter wide angle view. And when you stop down to F8, it's really good quality as you can see here. So pretty happy with that shot. Then I took an HDR. So this is an HDR. I just moved back a little bit and then took the three frames. And this is what the HDR photo looks like. It's a little bit over the top, this one, but I still think it looks pretty cool. Now looking at this bench with the shadow, this is a raw file. So this is the best exposure I could get with just shooting one frame. So you could see here, I edited this raw file to get it looking as good as possible. This is what the camera did straight off the camera when shooting in JPEG mode. And then an HDR will provide you results like this. Now, as far as lens flare goes, I was shooting at this tree here and I saw this purple pop up. So at a specific angle at 50 millimeter, I did get just this little bit of lens flare, but I had to be very, very specific in order to get that purple to show up. So it was kind of hard to do. So lens flare is really well controlled on this lens overall, I would say. So now I went down to this river. Uh, this is the Never Sink River. A lot of people fly fish in this river. And uh, I took a couple of HDRs here just to show you in the morning sunrise what you can get. And these are really nice shots in my opinion. 24, all the way to 50. And this lens is really good for landscape because you have to stop down to like F8 anyway when you're shooting landscapes. Pretty happy with these results. So when I was coming up from that river, the car was actually like backlit by the sun and I thought it looked pretty cool. So I took a picture of the car and uh, it created that sun flare effect. Then I took an HDR, which gave me this result. So you can see this is just one JPEG off the camera. And then here is an HDR. And here is just one last snapshot of the green bridge from this morning. All right, if you guys are interested, I just wanna show you how I had the camera set up for those HDR photos. So if you go in here to exposure compensation and then hit the set button, what you can do is turn this top dial and it actually spreads out the exposure lines as you could see there. So what this is telling you is it's gonna take a shot at negative two, zero and plus two for a total of three shots. And that's how I like to take my HDRs. It's very simple, very basic. I don't like to make it too complicated. So once you set that like that, you can click okay. And now you can see on the exposure how it has those three dashes. So the next thing I wanna do is I wanna set the camera for drive mode right here. See how I have it on high speed drive mode? So when I go to take the HDR, really what you wanna do is use a tripod and take the three shots. But what I like to do is just hand hold a lot of the time. And as long as the shutter speed is fast enough and you're very still, you can hand hold and take the three frames because when you create the HDR, it auto aligns the photos for you. So you can get away with doing it handheld. Now, uh, best results, you're gonna to wanna to use a tripod, of course, but you know, if you're just walking around taking shots, 
that's how uh, I like to do it. So that's how I have the camera set up. And you can see here how it says auto exposure bracketing above like the uh, exposure comp there. It's like letting you know that bracketing is enabled. And for aperture, I would recommend having it somewhere around like F8 or so. And then as far as ISO goes, I would try to have the ISO as low as possible. It depends on the lighting conditions, of course, but ultimately you would want the ISO as low as possible. All right guys, that about wraps up this review for the Canon RF 24 to 50 millimeter lens. Now, overall, I would say for the money, we're talking $200 if you buy this with the Canon R8 as a kit lens. For that money, I would say that this lens is really good, you know? So if you're on a budget, this is a really good option. It's only $200 when you buy it with the camera. So that's a really, really good deal. Um, now, as far as the lens goes, the build quality is pretty crappy. It's like all plastic, no weather sealing. You know, the micro contrast isn't the greatest, so it looks a little bit flat, you know, in, in some of the contrasty areas uh, compared to like a better quality lens. Also, the distortion is pretty bad. At 24 millimeter, you saw in the lab scene, you know, in the real world photos, it's, it's pretty horrific how much distortion there is. So they're doing a lot of lens correction on camera and Lightroom, of course, if you select it on a RAW file, will do the lens correction for you. So as bad as the distortion is, once corrected, the photos look pretty good. So, you know, in the real world, is it that big of a deal? You know what I mean? It's, it's something you need to think about. But looking at the results, I would say in the real world, it's not that big of a deal because the results look pretty darn good to me, especially those HDR photos. I was pretty happy with the landscapes in particular. Now, if you're trying to use this lens as a portrait lens, it's not really the greatest because the aperture isn't really fast enough to get blurry backgrounds like I like. So I would look at something more like the RF 50 millimeter F 1.8 lens. You can get that lens really cheap. It's not that expensive, but that fast F 1.8 aperture combined with 50 millimeters will give you really good background separation. So. Again, if you're looking for doing portraits and stuff like that, you might want to consider that lens. But for a kit lens, this offers a nice range and it's super affordable. It's very compact and lightweight. So it has a lot of things going for it uh, as far as cost, size, things like that. So, all right guys, I really hope you got what you were looking for in this lens review. If you could do me a favor and hit that thumbs up, I'd appreciate it. Please consider subscribing if you wanna see more videos like this. Also below the video in the description area, I got links for all the different camera gear uh, I recommend for the Canon R8. Also the lens hood that you need for this lens because it doesn't come with one. That stuff will be linked below in the description area. All right, guys, I will catch up with you next time. Take care.